dear colleagues, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, warm welcome to all of you, especially uh, accommodating this uh, change in date and time in such a short notice. We appreciate your, your efforts on that. Um, let's give ourselves uh, two more minutes, uh, maybe not even two, less than two. And without further delay, we will kick off. Uh, our, our side event. You don't see the screen sharing because I'm about to finish the presentation, so bear with me. And um, we will, by the time all colleagues settle down, I think we will be uh, also having all done. Um, so. Good. I think we are there. Um, let me come back. Um, share screen. You know, screen sharing. Good. I hope you can see, huh? Kata is all okay. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Thanks, Kata. So, colleagues, um, ladies, and gentlemen and their friends. Uh, my name is Imser and I'm the Director of Global Advocacy at ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability. And this webinar is the, the monthly webinar for the Local Governments and Municipal Authorities Constituency, LGMA in short form. Um, this webinar was supposed to be scheduled in on Wednesday this week, but we had some issues, so we had to postpone and, and sincere apologies for this. Um, these webinars are repeated in, in a manner that every month we review what we have achieved uh, and we also go forward uh, with the upcoming agendas. In that sense, um, I will try to keep as much as possible the generic information, but rather focus on, on especially our, our uh, progress with stock take uh, and especially the June agenda, which is very busy. And I also complete with COP28 scenario. Uh, in this call, I also have invited a couple of our colleagues from uh, different working groups of the LGMA constituency who have been involved in this process. We will try to make them as much as possible actively intervening uh, in this process so that they can also share uh, the latest updates from their side. But um, as I said, um, let's let's be flexible, I think, in terms of how we will uh, continue on that. But we will stick to the time limit. Uh, and anytime you can type in Q&A box or chat box. Um, oh, okay. Um, Leah, Leah seems to be leaving quickly. Leah, how much time do you have? Or shall we start with you? Leah, can you hear us? Uh, Leah just uh, sent us a message that she has to leave quickly uh, and we don't want to lose her obviously from you and have it that she's already in Berlin at the moment for uh, and this key partnership event I guess. Uh, Leah, I had not prepared too many slides but I have one slide which combines June agendas um, which is UN Habitat agenda and uh, UNFCC agenda. I suggest if you are in a difficult time we can immediately give you the floor so that you can give us any updates from your habitat assembly. Do we see any feedback from Leah or she? Or, or, ah, she is here. Yes, apologies. I just got promoted to a panelist, so I couldn't react <laughs> to you actually. It's like I'd love to say hi, but I can't. Um, well, hi, Yunus. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Apologies. I am just in Berlin. I need to run up to the airport. So I'll only be able to join you for the first five minutes. And then I need to make my way back to Nairobi. Um, yes, happy to give a brief update of what's uh, happening related to the UN Habitat Assembly next week. Um, we, are, we are having several um, surge related events. Maybe I should tell you first that uh, in consultation with as many people that are here, we've come up with a new updated brochure on search that puts some of these ideas in a bit more crunchy and convincing way. I'm happy to circulate this after this call to you, Eunice, and maybe then you can circulate it to the group. Uh, I've meant to do this already yesterday, but 
things are rather busy at the moment with the assembly. Um, so apologies, but yeah, it's, so that will also be reflected on the UN Habitat website, uh, hopefully later today as well. So it's an, an updated brochure with search, some of the entry points, some of the things we're trying to achieve with the initiative, with a call to action, also with a link to the ministerial meeting report. So everything in one, uh, one piece, in one uh, place, um, and an easy to uh, digest the format, so to say. So uh, hopefully a good document to give a, a brief overview. So that's just on, on the development of surge. Um, we have next week several events planned related to surge. Um, it's we have a st surge stakeholder consultation workshop. So that's one and a half hours um, on where we will present some updates on the initiative, but also give uh, member states the opportunity to ask questions. Of course, everybody else who's, uh, who's interested uh, can ask questions, uh, participate. It's, it's, it's designed to be an open workshop. Uh, we have, um, there's the ICLE uh, run side event on Monday, but I guess you know, you've already communicated about that. So I, can, I don't need to, to, to discuss this in much detail right now. Um, but, and then there is uh, just a flag also COP28 presidency a stakeholder consultation workshop happening um, at the assembly as well, which is um, inviting member states, but also uh, everybody else, all the city networks, mayors and so on, to give their inputs on um, shaping the agenda on the road to COP28, as well as uh, discussing why it's important to strengthen the other meeting of the NPC. We have several other search related side events um, I mean, I just mentioned the one that, that ICLE is organizing um, together with, I forgot, the Global um, pa Parliament of Mayors. Global Parliament of Mayors and UN Habitat, I believe. Um, there is also um, the Global ABC is organizing a workshop where we will also present search. Um, we are also, uh, there is a, um, a high a special session on climate and crisis. Uh, happening as part of the official program. Um, there is also another stakeholder consultation happening uh, on the relation between LOTUS and SEARCH. So LOTUS, the Low uh, Transport uh, Sustainable, um, I'm, I'm missing the acronym, but the, the, the COP27 initiative on um, and, and low emission transport and how that links with SEARCH and with other synergies and how can we collaborate and work together and what are some ideas to also push that forward. So that's also happening in uh, at the assembly. We've put together a brief flyer. Um, I'm happy, I, I don't know, Eunice, if you have it, but happy to also send this after the call so you can circulate to this group uh, for anybody yep. who might be in Nairobi or um, whose uh, colleagues might be in Nairobi so they can also be more than happy for, for everybody to attend. And, and participate and really have an active participation at the assembly and then carry all these messages to the SPs and all the city capital. Excellent. Uh, Leah, uh, do you would like to share any updates on the resolutions which is being sure. negotiated at the moment? Yeah. Sure, apologies. Uh, I realized I just got to the last bullet point. Um, so uh, unfortunately I haven't been able to, there was quite a bit of negotiation happening today on the resolutions. I haven't been able to get these updates quite yet, um, but there are. There used to be two climate change related resolutions in the making for the assembly. This has now been merged into one, which is also a logical, um, a logical thing to do. Um, was requested by member states to merge, so one is being put forward by the um, by the African states, spearheaded by Egypt and uh, by by Pakistan. This has now been merged into into one resolution. Um, we are, and so now today, as well as the last day, some, some of the first negotiations have happened um, on, on this. Um, I mean, we will see what's coming out of this, but it, it is being tabled later today, I think actually in parallel to this call. Um, it's being tabled again for discussion. Um, there are, of course, some amendments and change being made, but overall, there uh, seems to be strong interest in the climate change. Yeah. Leah, uh, we, we shared in our uh, latest bulletin that was circulated yesterday links to the resolutions and originally submitted. So what I suggest, um, based on what you, the information you provided, 
after this call, we will circulate another mail that compiles a bit more information, and we can uh, we can share this as well. So that is our latest latest update. We can do that. Uh, we can add the the, the full search flyer. Uh, maybe for those in, well, in the call, it, the the important thing is that you inhabit that assembly every four years, and the first one was more, of course, kicking off for the first time ever an assembly. Now it's becoming much more flesh on the bones. And as far as I know, this is for the first time there's such a big climate agenda and urbanization climate related agenda. Again, we are feeling the the wave or or, or, or the, the impacts from the climate community coming to Nairobi. And the good news is that whatever comes from Nairobi, they will continue in the second week to, to bond. Um, and that's exactly the synergy we're trying to build up so that multiple fronts uh, speak the similar languages or at least aware of each other. Uh, the good news, for example, Pakistani delegation was already in 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 Sharm el Sheikh. They are going to Nairobi and they are coming back to Bonn and and uh, Dubai onwards. So these are, I think, exciting moments because the outcomes will also give us how much we can be expecting a major outcome from the COP28 as a decision or or any any uh, substantial outcome. So that uh, this 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 helps our work. Um, in that sense, Leo, I have only one question though. Um, during the, I mean, because I was not too much involved in the first habitat assembly negotiations in the UNFCC space. You remember, sometimes we are able to intervene. I know Global Task Force will intervene at the opening and and at the end. Uh, during the negotiations of these, those in the Global Task Force or local authority major group, are they able to intervene in the negotiations or are they able to observe the negotiations? The good thing is that in the UN Habitat website, you can see a lot of document progress. You can even see the track changes so that uh, you're understanding what's going on. It's not that much close. It's much more transparent. Um, do you have any information on that? No, unfortunately, I'm not plugged into that uh, mm. at the moment to, to understand how, who can intervene. I know there's probably some space to observe, but uh, on intervention, okay. I'm... I, I'm not sure how we will also, being handled. We will also check with our colleagues uh, from the Global Task Force and UCLG and be aware, of, of course, now we are focusing on climate change, but there is a big agenda on the biodiversity. It's also for the first time UN Habitat member states are discussing biodiversity in such an entirety because it's the response to the Kunming Montreal framework, which has a lot of elements. Um, and, and we also have, of course, a number of other topics like localization, uh, housing the traditional agendas that you have and always been uh, the, the uniqueness of climate and biodiversity for the first time there is such a standalone item and and that is also very very uh, helpful for all of us i guess uh Leah, is there anything else uh, if not we can free you so that you can reach your destination in time without further delays you're going back to nairobi i guess and we'll see you there some of us and hopefully we'll welcome you back to bonn so it will be a kind of uh, a shuttle diplomacy for you. Keep safe and uh, wish you the best and we'll continue to stay in touch. Thanks so much to everybody. Looking yeah, forward to seeing I, you in Nairobi and Bonn. Exactly. I don't uh, raise any hands at the moment, but I mean, if there's anyone who'd like to also discuss, so one thing, it uh, side event, as I said, it was on 5th of June. Uh, there is a World Assembly of Local Government on the 8th of June. We can circulate this information. If any one of those in the call who would like to share any updates from their agenda in Nairobi, you can intervene since Leah is here. But if not, we can go back to our own uh, agenda. Uh, and we'll keep you, Leah, if there are any outcomes from our call as well. And uh, now I see one thing. Uh, ah, yeah, okay, Leah has shared has, has, has her, her email. Yeah, definitely, uh, they will be on site together. Bernard, Seren, I think you, three of you all are there. Yeah. Good. Thanks Good so much good. for your flexibility, Yunus. You're welcome. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks. Take, Bye. Care. Take care. Take care. So, uh, colleagues, let's go back to our own, um, let's say, traditional um, process. Uh, I see in most of the panelists, oh, sorry, attendees of this call are the ones who are familiar with these processes. But those who are not familiar, very, very in a, in a, in a and 30 seconds elevator talk. This is a constituency that is following the negotiations since 95. We're also contributing to the action agenda. And, and we're not only focusing off on the COP itself, but throughout the year we engage. 
we have monthly webinars, we have monthly uh, bulletins so that you can you can engage and feel free to subscribe yourself. We have a map of events throughout the year and we're in the middle of this year. We are tracking UN or UNFCC related events. We are following global uh, and national events and we are following the LGMA led events. Um, in that sense, we are building on the outcome of COP27, you have heard. Uh, we have the the, the the climate justice and climate ambition combined now. And the second phase of the power program can definitely start off. And in that sense, what we need is not any more negotiation, but rather on formulation of implementation, which depends on finance, capacity building, and actually governance uh, of all these processes. The the good thing is, is this is the process going forward. Essential thing is that the new normal in this space is the urbanization as a sector, as, as, a, as a development agenda, and multi-level action to be shaping the, the second phase of the power sector so that it is much better than the first one. Uh, and one thing you would see more in the upcoming discuss discussions, the UNFCC negotiations will also change significantly. Uh, this year, from Sharm el to Dubai, we are emphasizing how we can elevate search or operationalize search. We will focus on stock take, uh, and we will have updates on that, and we will continue our accelerate accelerate our engagement, which will finally conclude with the uh, multi level action pavilion in 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 Dubai. Uh, we have a leadership that is involved, and we have many uh, con connections to them in a couple of times. Uh, either at the leaders level or at the staff level, the latest one was at the Petersburg Dialogue. So when we have concluded our webinar in 20th of April, on 20th of April, what has happened since then, the major milestones we can feel is that at the UN, UNFCC level, we had Petersburg Dialogues. Um, this was for the first time an opportunity that we as constituencies have interacted with the president directly, but more importantly, it was a follow-up from the uh, the, the the March um, Copenhagen ministerial that there is a continuous dynamic atmosphere um, and I must confess this was really very interactive and very inclusive. Um, you can read the, the summary but the summary doesn't say too much things especially on the local engagement but especially um, a number of partners have raised this uh, profile of the local and regional government's engagement very clearly. Um, other than uh, Petersburg dialogue outside the UN this year this month, we also had the, the Sendai Framework Review, which was also a milestone. Uh, and the, for the first time in the, the negotiation document, there was a reference to making cities resilient campaign, which is one of the first UN campaigns for cities. And in that sense, that's also a good thing to follow up. At the global level, uh, there were uh, a major outcome. The G7 Leaders Summit met in, Nairo, in Hiroshima, and they made uh, every year they released their leaders communique. And for the second year in a row, the leaders have addressed uh, the power of cities as a, a driver or as a key aspect for all areas of sustainable development. That's fantastic. Uh, and one thing uh, that was very interesting, unique, was the Summit of Americas. We will just give the floor of Kale to in a short while. It was a very example, uh, uh, exemplary, uh, even a very good practice of uh, a national effort in combining with local and regional governments, not just in their own territories, but even across the whole continent. So that was a very unique model of multi-level action. From LGMA part, we have participated in a number of workshops, uh, and I know I have we have colleagues, especially from those processes. So I will give the floor to them. But let's let's go to the City Summit of Americas because, as I said, it was not just for the Americans or United States, but across the continent. That was a unique moment. Uh, Kale uh, Ikle was very active involved. Um, would you like to share? I take your two of your slides, so these you can find here. So the floor is yours now. Thank you so much, Yunus. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you um, today. And uh, yeah, as Yunus said, the City Summit of the Americas was um, hosted by the United States government, uh, uh, the State Department. Uh, with a city, uh, the city county of Denver, Colorado, um, which happens to also be the hometown of uh, Ickley, USA, um, our office is here in the United States, um, but it wasn't solely for the United States. Um, this was a first, first of its kind um, event uh, that was serving the entire Americas. Um, so the 
the genesis of the city summit um, was in the um, a, a recurring summit of the Americas uh, series um, hosted by the U.S. government, um, serving uh, nations from all the way from uh, Canada down to Argentina, so the entire Western Hemisphere. Um, and coming out of that um, summit of the Americas last year um, it was this um, idea that uh, local governments have you know, a, a place in solving a, a broad range of challenges. Um, and so really need their own event uh, to bring together mayors and, and council members, regional authorities uh, with their counterparts at um, state and, uh, and national level. Um, so I, you know, I mentioned these uh, varied challenges that the summit um, sought to address. Uh, so this was sustainability um, and climate, of course, but also themes uh, across resilience, uh, digitalization, health, um, particularly post uh, COVID recovery, um, and then also safeguarding democracy. And um, so those same themes from the summit of the Americas carried forward into the cities, a uh, summit of the Americas. Uh, so a first time event uh, gathering more than 250 mayors uh, in particular uh, with around 2,500 additional uh, representatives from um, cities, uh, state and regional governments um, and city serving networks. Um, I, you know, personally really appreciated uh, the collaboration that the uh, U.S. State Department showed with um, a wide range of city networks. So very early on, uh, even, you know, eight months in advance of the summit, um, the U.S. government's collaborating with C40, with UCLG, um, with Global Covenant of Mayors and ICLE, um, and others to put together uh, the program. Uh, and that allowed, you know, our insights from, from the LGMA and, and all these partners to really drive the agenda um, at the summit and, um, and showed that, you know, the, the U.S. government is, is really um, turning to the expertise that our community has built over the last decades. It's very explicit that they, they believe in the work that we're doing um, and putting trust in, in these processes that we have formed. Um, so this, uh, I'll, I'll share a few outcomes here. Uh, one uh, big one is this, uh, as highlighted in this photo um, on that uh, previous slide that Eunice had showed. Um, and this was the launch of the City's Forward event. Uh, sorry for making you go back, Eunice, but um, it was a, a you know, very key outcome. Um, the U.S. government uh, State Department has developed this uh, kind of flagship um, city serving uh, educational and, and economic development program. Um, it's called Cities Forward. It was announced at COP27, actually, and then um, this uh, launch event at the City Summit uh, recognized the partners. Um, so, you know, I work for ICLE uh, USA, uh, very proud uh, to um, announce here that uh, ICLE USA is the partner to the Cities Forward event. Um, working uh, side by side in collaboration with the US State Department, um, also Resilient Cities Catalyst and the Institute of the Americas. Um, down the line uh, across the two uh, years of this program, um, many subject matter expert um, partners coming in. Um, and then don't wanna forget to mention um, ICLE uh, Mexico and Caribbean serving office, also ICLE uh, South America. Um, our, our partners to this initiative. So what we'll do uh, is be pairing 12 um, Latin American and Caribbean cities with 12 uh, cities in the United States in a two-year um, leadership and learning uh, exchange that um, ultimately results in a highly financeable, implementable uh, project in each of those uh, Latin American cities um, that really, you know, drives innovation and clean energy and resilience, um, leaving no one behind and, and serving those most vulnerable um, is, is underlying whatever projects are selected. Uh, so just to call out, if you, you work with cities in any of those uh, regions, the application period is open. Um, it will close on June 15th. Um, so you have about two weeks to work with your cities to apply to be part of this um, program. Um, and it is, there is funding 
available to cities that are involved. So please get that word out. All right, I'll turn now to the, the other uh, few outcomes here. Um, climate migration, uh, climate induced uh, migration was a, a theme that came forward quite a bit. Um, thank you to C40, uh, to Mayor's Migration uh, Council, um, as well as our, our local champion here in the US, which is uh, Commissioner Bridget Shea, um, one of the, the people you saw in that first photo, um, who is our ICLEI board chair and also a very strong advocate around climate migration. So um, closing plenary, other moments along the way really, really brought that theme into focus. Um, also announced at COP27 was this U.S. scale initiative. It's a sub-national um, focused uh, initiative for deep decarbonization, particularly in hard to abate sectors. Um, and so the scale initiative had a roundtable with ambassador, um, sub-national ambassador Nina Hachigian. Um, and ICLE uh, to address methane as kind of an entry point um, to the scale initiative, um, ultimately sourcing solutions that can be rolled out across the, um, the Americas and, and around the world. So more to come on there. Uh, similarly, with Department of Energy, um, clean and just uh, energy solutions uh, highlighted in a roundtable. And then... Um, Kind of an un unprecedented opportunities to bring circularity and nature-based uh, solutions to this kind of forum, um, and so we're grateful to, to State Department and then all the all the people there. Many of you maybe were uh, were with us in Denver and we're helping to to bring these themes forward. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it with that. But it was a really exciting event to be part of. Thanks, Eunice. Thanks, thanks, Kale, and congratulations. I see from Heloise from Regions 4, she's asking about the information. Heloise, actually, in the, the May bulletin that was released yesterday, you can see that this is the cover story, but we will include this in more specific the email or the, the, the contact point for this uh, application. Uh, but well, I have two, two points, um, Kale, for you. One interesting thing is that, let's remember, uh, I mean, US is not a party to the Convention on Biodiversity, but through the cities, the biodiversity and nature is coming to the U.S., uh, which is really, really, again, an exemplary process that we should be proud of. My questions are, first of all, um, I was, uh, I mean, I think the expectation at the moment is that in the upcoming U.N. Habitat Agenda and in the U.N. Uh, climate talks in Bonn, how the U.S. delegation will speak about this. Because it's it's interesting. This is a process led by State Department, like Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, I I would really hope that uh, when the U.S. delegation intervenes in Nairobi or in the, in the U.S. in in Bonn, they could raise this. And for example, we will uh, catch uh, some opportunities on that. I have seen a U.S. delegation side event, but I'm not sure whether it's related to this. So I think that will be the first thing that we should try to pressure. And second. Again, um, that uh, this, if you if you listen to what you have been describing about the the cities were over this, for me, I was thinking that oh, the the European Covenant of Mayors, which later on expanded to Global Covenant of Mayors. Now we all know the GCOM has regional secretariats. So the, this is like a U.S. version of somehow in terms of introducing. I think we have to be except uh, the, the, the message could be that these kind of bottom-up initiatives, how can these be incorporated into Race to Zero, incorporated in the action agenda of the champions, how we can make this that is part of the usual UNFCC process and exactly the, the essence of the surge initiative so that it receives these kind of national and thematic initiatives. I think that is the lesson for us to the LGMA to make sure that the next step, and especially the delegations speak about this. Let me be very clear. I was congratulating the U.S. delegation when I was in the Petersburg Climate Dialogue. Trick Telly, we know him very well for a long time. But when John Kerry was on stage, you can hardly recall this uh, kind of an explanation. So I think we have to do our best that the delegations really promote this as a good multi-level action in Nairobi, in Bonn, and in, at Dubai. That should be our homework. Uh, but um, if there are any other from the partners um, who would like to contribute, especially those who are in the in the summit, uh, feel free, you can you can combine 
uh, we can combine your input uh, and we said we will circulate the city's forward uh, call for expressions as well so that you can also uh, have that uh, opportunity to intervene. If not, uh, we will continue. Um, and actually, I would like to go back to the, again, the previous agenda, but um, you actually have uh, referred to the closing plenary focusing on migration, climate induced migration. And in fact, uh, in the LGME agenda this, year, this month, one of the hot topics was the engagement of LGME, for instance, LGME in the loss and damage finance, by the way, I forgot that. It should be loss and damage finance workshop, a transitional committee. Uh, and we're very proud that our, our partners uh, have, have managed to be actively involved in this process. So we now have a working group under the LGMA that consists of D40, UCLG, um, uh, Mayor's Migration Council, Scottish government, uh, and especially those who are involved both in adaptation and finance, they are part of this process. Uh, in this group, uh, I mean, we shared the links in our latest update, but um, I know, for example, uh, Sunandan was representing in the workshop uh, and David was in the in the transition committee, but I know our colleagues uh, also have, have paid a lot of uh, work together. I see Claudia here from C40. Claudia, if you'd like to share some reflections maybe any any discussions that you would like this group to be aware of because that process is evolving in the next couple of uh, weeks and months um the floor is yours if you want claudia or don't want to force you but uh, since i i saw you here i thought you could you could also directly intervene because you were involved in the preparation of this process Hi, yes, thank you. It was really great to be involved in, in the LGMA, the start of the working groups, and we had a representative be able to, to join the first workshop in Bonn. So it's been great to see how much the parties have really recognized local governments, but we have a, a busy few months ahead. So thank you for all the support, and hopefully we have more to share soon. So uh, just, just uh, to recap, uh, there is now an official submission that captures uh, inputs from C40, UCL, Jameer's Migration Council. And we also have some submitted uh, the link to the Scottish government uh, compilation of practical action at the local level and subnational level. Uh, as far as I know, the next step will be, uh, there will be another workshop, I think in October. Uh, uh, and as far as we know, there may be some discussions here in Bonn. So those delegations who are following, we have made sure David, uh, who was representing us at the transition committee? He will also join uh, the follow the the negotiation the first week so that we can keep uh, the the colleagues involved informed on that. Uh, I see from uh, hello is that regions four would be uh, engaged. Of course, you should be there, especially in your work on adaptation. One thing maybe uh, just one second an opportunity. This working group is a bit unique one. It's it's it is loss and damage finance. As once again, I would correct my. A slide here, which means we have to have both finance colleagues involved because it's it's a different source of uh, discussion. And maybe uh, those who follow the discussion, there is a big debate about whether this should be a new fund uh, in addition to adaptation fund, green climate fund. Uh, and I think our position, as far as I know, most of our partners in the LGM are supporting the idea that it should be a new one. The reason is the way loss and damage will be financed, that that was the condition of the global north and global south even, that it will not be limited to only public money. And that's exactly the recommendation of the Scottish government. It should be bundling a number of private and innovative sources of finance. This means that it doesn't have to be only limited to the climate budgets of the countries. There may be other sources because the loss and damage budgets are huge. Loss and damage costs are huge. And it will be going beyond just the Minister of Environment budget, just the municipal budget. I think that is the biggest discussion that will happen at and the way forward. And I think we are encouraging that this should be a new funding and it can even be possible because in the past, you can remember, we had seen uh, Quebec, we have Wallonia, we had Scottish government putting money into these processes. Uh, and maybe if there's a, a bit, different funding mechanism that is not 
only limited to UNFCC governance, but if it's even more inclusive, maybe we as local regions can even have a say in the fund by providing resources, but also getting uh, channeling this money to our 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 our, our, our constituents. So maybe. I assume this would be the biggest discussion. I don't know whether Claudio, you have any comments or in the C40, are you whether, whether you are discussing or inside the working group whether you have discussed anything on that? Yeah, no, that's that's completely aligned. Our our main focus is on accessibility and ideally building up technical expertise to get to other levels of of the conversation, but making sure that accessibility is there and and that informality is also a, a consideration. But yeah. ideally, Perfect. yes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, great, great. So this is this is good. Um, um, it was a pity. The first meeting of the group was in Luxor in the end of March. We were not there as constituency, but now we 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 bridged the gap and we are now there. Our voices are heard. And uh, as far as I remember, the reports from David was that there were also very good feedback from the other constituencies, the NGOs, the women group. They were very happy to see the LGMA being involved actively in the space. So there will be more uh, opportunities on that space. So let's continue. You see here uh, the global stock take. There was an informal workshop. And this would be the next slide I would like to take you through because that is um, more or less, I mean, you, you, you will remember we have been sharing this uh, with you since the beginning of the year, how we roll the global stock take. We have focused more on the local level implementation. I'm very happy we have the first example. Kale will be coming in this shortly again because, again, there's a U.S. leadership. City of Concord has taken the first action. But what I would like to um, take you is that uh, the in the stock take process so far, what we did not talk too much about is a bird's eye view of where has urbanization and multi-level action has evolved in this process since Paris Agreement? So the stock take is what has happened after Paris Agreement. And this, this two slides you would see now is extracted from the, the poster that ICTA has prepared uh, to be presented in the global stock take uh, next week, uh, hopefully if it is accepted. But I would like to use this opportunity to share with you. And this information is nothing new to any of you, but I think it even gives us really to uh, to 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 um, uh, to to get back to on on where we are uh, and what have we achieved. We just try to have very simple figures, some some let's say bulk 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 part figures. Uh, for example, the number of local residents who declared climate emergency. It was it was literally um, less than. Uh, even zero by the 2015. I remember the first city was in uh, Australia, Dunedin, uh, who 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 have uh, declared a climate emergency, and it was so long time for them to kick this off. And now, by the time we reach this, be it Fridays for Future, be it other resources, there is more than 2,500 or 2,200 local immigrants across the world who declared climate emergency. Does this mean that they are acting on it? No, of course, but they have shown a commitment. This is especially a council decision usually or a parliament decision, which means it is not the current administration across the whole political spectrum that has been a consensus. That I think is a huge resource and as a, as in a resource that we would like to tap in. And that's exactly what we're doing, for example, in the Daring Cities with Sedamia and all this process. Now, we go back to this commitment. The commitment is much more an a, a statement or a policy of the, the executive branches, which is the administration, those who are in power. And uh, before Paris, there were a lot of cities who had hundreds of commitments, but the ones that were really very ambitious for climate neutrality, like Copenhagen, like Oslo, they were literally very few. I mean, we can more or less say that less than 100. But uh, now, with the race to zero and and and, and other initiatives, uh, the EU has kicked off as well uh, the the 100 uh, carbon neutral mission and all this stuff. We can comfortably say that we have more than 1,000 cities and regions committed to this process. Uh, and let's go back to the NDCs. By the time the first NDCs, it was even the first NDCs were all non Paris Agreement compatible because they were all prepared before Paris. None of them, none of them have made a clear reference that they have 
put their uh, ambition because of their engagement with local energy development. But we want to be polite. We just want to say that it is not applicable. But if we want to come to the refreshed indices that was submitted by Glasgow, around 60 countries, in some cases it's more than 60, have explicitly mentioned that they have raised their ambition because from Paris Agreement to Glasgow, they have engaged with local energy government in design of this commitment, and that is exactly the power that we are trying to bring forward. And again, a, a very important study that you have that is conducting for a long while, uh, the urban components in most of the indices, it's 60 per, 60%, and it's, it's, a, it's a range. There are some, uh, when we say urban components, we are saying any action plan that is related to urban development, urbanization, or at the local or regional level. It has increased 86%. It doesn't mean that every city in this nation or this, they are receiving, but still there is a certain increase in the NDC design as well. That is exactly, again, type of things we are trying to see the changes. And I see Heloys from Regions 4 that we should add uh, the, the, uh, the NAPS, the Nation Adaptation Programs, uh, should also be incorporated. And, and Heloys, I'm sure you have a figure there. Uh, excellent. You will be sending uh, 52%. That's exactly the type of information we should bring together so that when we are talking in Nairo, in Bonn, at the Global Stock Take, our representatives should be speaking about that. The second slide is about the evolution of the process, the number of initiatives, the number of partnerships that has skyrocketed, almost skyrocketed after Paris Agreement. This is exactly a symbol of change of mindset and landscape. Before Paris, we had two COP decisions in 2010 and in 2013. But if you look at the language, it was relatively, I don't want to say weak, but it was, let's say, first, like, icebreakers. For example, we were recognized as a governmental stakeholder, which was good. It was really nice terminology. Uh, but if you look at the Paris Agreement, we're in the preamble, and all levels of government are there. After Paris Agreement, we have Glasgow Climate Pact. Multi-level is clearly in the text. So that in the official decisions, there is a change. And that's why we're saying that multi-level action delivered has now uh, been the new normal. Inside the NFC, before Paris Agreement, there have been so many processes, discussion uh, that is mainly driven outside on the way towards Paris uh, around the negotiation of ADPs, things have started to evolve, compact of marriage. But if you look at what has happened after Paris, we had global covenant being emerging as a compact of marriage and combination of merger of compact of mayors and European covenant of mayors, human settlement in the Marrakesh partnership, IPCC uh, in, 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 in coming up uh, with its uh, agenda, Talanoa dialogues, uh, first ever multi level action event. Cities raised to zero, raised to zero, reduced reduce it up, pavilion uh, surge, ministerial meeting. It is, it is really, uh, I think this really shows that both as networks, but even more importantly, with our partners, we have increased the number and quality and the impact of our partnerships. I think that is the biggest reflection of the, the, the impact of Paris Agreement. And the last point, outside the NFCC, there is a life outside the NFCC, and that's also very important because outcomes from these areas will feed and vice versa. In the past, we mainly had in the UN disaster risk reduction and making cities resilient campaign, which is even now it's just coming even something stronger. But it was the first model uh, when we were almost, when it was a taboo to speak about cities in the UNFCC, the disaster community was already campa campaigning for cities. Similarly, biodiversity had a 10-year action plan building on the, the, the first ever decision. But if we look at now inside, uh, outside the UNFCC, uh, in after power segment, we have SDG 11, we have new urban agenda, local 2030, urban 20 came up. Um, we have a gap fund uh, after the UN Climate Summit, uh, making cities resilient campaign has evolved into a new phase. Um, we have under G20, a new localization group, uh, we have biodiversity framework, which is even stronger with the target 12. And urban seven came up, which is in, in a rapid time span, it has increased its influence. Now it has come up with the first ever G7 roundtable on subnational climate action. These are showing, I think, that type of a message we have to communicate during the technical dialogue and rest 
uh, that the the landscape and the mindset significantly changed positively since Paris Agreement. And this, we have to now put it into more practice. And that is exactly what we want to do during the stock take process, that we want to bring our localities to up to speed. We would like to discuss local commitments, NDCs, and climate justice. And um, in that sense, we have made a, a first ever experience. And Kale, let's listen from you. I have um, used all of your slides in one slide. On, so you can share what has been the experience in Concord. Great, thanks, Eunice, and uh, good job organizing the slides in a, a clearer way. Um, so I had the uh, the privilege uh, and the cool experience of um, being at a historic event uh, a couple weeks ago there on the 22nd of May um, in the city of Concord, New Hampshire, um, that uh, hosted the first uh, local stock taking event under this banner of stock take for climate emergency, um, you know, serving to kick off a, a global experience. Um, we've already been inviting, you know, hundreds of cities around the world to host this stock take event. Um, and I'm hopeful that we now have an example to show a path forward and a really strong example. So Concord is a city in the Northeast, um, uh, not, not super far north of uh, New York where I'm at, um, but it has this kind of small but mighty uh, role um, because it is the host of the primary events for the uh, presidential um, uh, uh, selection process here in the United States. Um, so every four years, you know, dozens of uh, hopeful uh, presidents of the US descend on this tiny little town of Concord, New Hampshire, um, and and so lots of uh, you know kind of test testing the waters and meeting these uh, the stakeholders going on in this um, community, which has made people very savvy in this place politically. Um, and so it, that's why even though this is a small town, it's not all that big of a surprise that they're hosting um, the stock take uh, as the first in the United States. Um, just so you know, several more to follow: New York City. Um, a few uh, cities and counties in Florida um, and more already uh, scheduling their events. So we'll be looking to, uh, to Concord. Um, what happened uh, here was very much following the model that um, uh, Eunice has uh, talked about. So answering these questions of where are we today? Um, where do we want to uh, go? And then how do we get there in a, a truly climate just uh, future? Um, so this, uh, you know, event over a couple hours um, uh, went through this in a very systematic um, way. Um, some uh, highlights here is that it um, was modeling multi-level action. Um, so city council uh, was represented alongside youth and the business community, but also inviting um, a New Hampshire state representative. Um, Representative Rebecca McWilliams um, there, uh, local media um, broadcasting this um, to uh, the regional news outlet, um, and then a centering or orienting, I guess, around the, the fact that the U.S. is in this unprecedented moment of climate investment. Um, so how can a city, how can a region really leverage, you know, the infra uh, Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Bill, these other um, sources of, of funding? Um, so the other you know, thing that stood out to me in the, in the remarks is just this uh, understanding of Concord being a part of a global network of cities and drawing inspiration from places like Paris uh, that have, you know, um, mandated that all, you know, parking lots of a certain size must have solar on top of them. And so this, you know, tiny town in the United States uh, drawing up a resolution that's modeled after one from, from Paris. And it really just showed that, you know, this, this global network can build on success from anywhere. We, we need to kind of step away from this idea um, that, you know, a big city does not apply to a small place, Concord's in a rural uh, position, um, but influencing uh, some of the bigger cities like Boston and others around them. Um, and so I think a, a really good uh, model of, you know, sharing, um, 
sharing can be happening here. And the, the local stock take or the stock take for climate emergency um, as a year long experience can can do that. Um, Eunice, just so you you know, Concord is very interested in, in this idea to um, continue this series as an annual event. Um, this was hosted at a city um, community center, but wanting to turn their city hall there into a mini cop uh, and bring that um, experience um, home, maybe even around the, the time period of COP each year, you know, no, November, December, uh, and continue this forward. So um, I know I'll be promoting that concept um, in New York City and, and elsewhere um, as they host their own stock take events. Um, I'll put some outcomes uh, together here, lessons learned, and circulate them with the group um, so that you all can host a stock take in your community. Thank you. Excellent, Kale. We'll just also share once again our registration form and we would like to announce the preliminary list of cities who are committed to to host such sessions so that the university community is also aware of it. And, and, and anyone who wants to join that, this could be an opportunity for them to come. Cities and regions, of course, it's not just limited to the cities only. So um, I know we are uh, limited with time. Uh, I see some feedbacks in the chat box, but it was uh, mainly for the previous agendas, I guess, as well. Um, but if there's no uh, burning issue, let me briefly go to the agenda in Bonn next week. Uh, it, it is two, 10 days. Uh, the biggest agenda is for us. Of course, there's so many negotiation agenda items, but the most one is the global stock take. Um, our colleagues, uh, there are there will be four round tables and each of them we have assigned for one uh, LGMA partner. Uh, GCOM, Community of the Regions, Under Two Coalition, and UCLG will be there. ICLE hopefully will present the poster and we will also deliver the opening plenary. And at the end, we will have the closing plenary. I think we will have this with GCOM colleagues because it's the second week. Um, there is a, a workshop on Article 6.8 for the first time. Uh, ICLE is invited uh, uh, as, well, as well as UN Capital Development Fund, but with the presentation from ICLE will focus primarily to advocate that the non-market approaches should define sustainable urbanization as an approach so that especially in the global south, the, the, the big urbanization budgets could also be used in this uh, climate action. Uh, champions have scheduled a number of events in the first week and second week. I'm not going to the details, but we, are, we will be seeing the, the first launch of the adaptation agenda and there will also be some very good uh, dialogues about the integrity of those uh, initiatives, uh, breakthrough agendas, and others. Uh, in the second week, uh, because we have we have designed so that by the time the UN Habitat Assembly concludes and when we finish and when we come to Bonn on the Monday, the second week, we will schedule a, a closed LGMA leaders dialogue. Uh, when we say leaders, of course, we're talking about politicians, but this will be open for our colleagues as well, um, especially around their cities, we're expecting so many partners. So at 4.30, 4.30, we will organize a dialogue with the Friends of Multi-Level Action, the national government. We will be hoping that we could get all these countries who have been talking about this and, and actually doing this in the UNFCCC atmosphere. And we are very positive that a high-level champion, Razan al-Mubarak, will also join us at this meeting. Uh, we have two side events this time. There are not too many because of the UN Habitat Assembly, I guess. Uh, and actually, it is also in Brussels. There's a Brussels Urban Summit. Um, we will have ICLE UN Habitat side events on Tuesday at 11.30, um, 11.45, and then followed by GCOM side event at 1.15. 1, 1, 1 um, apart from that, there is a special on Monday morning. We will have a meeting at the GIZ, and we will be more than happy. We will be more than happy to welcome those in Bonn. Just give us an information so that we can register you because it's a slightly invitation on the event. Uh, and in the climate space, this month we'll finish with the June agenda, which is MedCOP in Tangier. Mayor Shakshaw and Mayor Sefiane will be, will be convening this important event. I would like to conclude because four more minutes left. Um, uh, the agenda that is shaping up because you know uh, the presidency has announced the, the calendar and they were expecting some feedbacks. Um, what under this condition looks like is that 
hopefully we will have an LGMA multi-level action pavilion again. This time, according to the financial resources, hopefully we can make it even larger. Uh, and this will be continuing to serve as the base for our inputs to the negotiations and action agenda. Then there will be a World Climate Action Summit and together with Bloomberg and COP28 presidency, we are expecting that there will be a, a, a couple of dozens of local and subnational leaders that will be engaged into the round tables very likely. Under this condition, we will also expect hopefully, especially with the outcome from the habitat agenda that is urbanization and climate sterile continues. According to the, this is at the moment 10th of December, but ICLE has submitted a position to the presidency that especially if we have World Climate Action Summit and if we have a subnational delegation there, it will be very difficult to bring a new group of uh, people and have the same visibility. So it's better to you make use of the World Climate Action and subnational delegation there so that they continue further to the day after to the, um, to the urbanization climate ministerial maybe. And it could be one of the first ministerial of, of the, the process. So th there are options and there are opportunities, but most importantly, you may remember we did not convene a mayor's or a subnational or local and regional council. The last one was in Bonn in 2000. Oh my God, 17 uh, at the COP uh, 23. And this was because the logistically it was convenient. UNFCC opened the space for us. Uh, we had the Bonn Fiji commitment, which kicked off many, many interesting initiatives and processes. Um, um, since then, we have not come in such such a such a major gathering during the COP because conditions were not suitable. Now we have seen we have gone through the presidency's uh, explanations, and it seems that presidency will create an, an, an additional space, additional to the plenaries uh, that can accommodate up to five hundred people. So, and those who are hosting the pavilions will be able to use the space. So, our logic is that. We will apply for the space, a 500 people accommodating technically everything that is there infrastructure wise. We will announce this like a local and subnational action summit or whatever the name it is. That it will be held in two parts. One, immediately after the World Climate Action Summit and especially announcing our initiatives or outcomes or inputs. And the second one at the beginning of the second week. And this is particularly essential or needed if the urbanization climate ministerial takes place in the second week so that we don't leave the climate ministerial like an orphan uh, that urbanization ministerial still has local and regional governments as there but they also have additional visibility just like those who have had the first weeks that is one reason but the more important second reason is that by the time the UNFCC uh, finishes the first week Starting from second week, the full authority goes to the presidency. So whatever is discussed in the negotiations, in fact, is literally over. And whatever comes from the presidency is the one that is being negotiated. Obviously, the presidency always try to build upon that they follow the agreed consensus, but they are always able to introduce new connections, new topics. So that's why that the beginning of this week, we convene again our leaders, those who are not in the first week, but still part of the process, so that we keep the momentum, we keep our presence heard and visible, so that then we discuss what we achieved in the first week, what is the presidency text, and how can we move forward. Those who are in the LGMA data briefing can remember this very well. The discussions there helped us enormously in shaping the, the agenda. This, we want to turn it into a more structured format because in Dubai, we have a space we can accommodate that, and we hopefully we will have resources as well. So that's why this COP will be a bit different positively, uh, and, and we will come up with you more in that sense. I think I have to, oh, uh, Ivana, I know you have some of this from the biodiversity space, but uh, I am asked by Kata to be finishing. Can you summarize in one minute the biodiversity updates?
Eva, you have the space, you have your hand. I can speak now, Eunice, can you hear me? Uh, Eva, just one, one moment, Eva has raised the hand. Uh, Eva, is there anything you want to address? Maybe, uh, okay. No, no. Okay. Um, good. Ivana, you can go ahead. Let's let's continue. Okay. Thank you very much. Just one minute. Opportunity. <laughs> yes, I know we're very very short on time. I just like to announce uh, on the next slide you have the agenda of our webinar series. This is part of our global mobilization for action towards COP uh, sixteen. We have uh, built five sessions around the most important outcomes for our constituency. So um, there you have the dates. The registration is now open at ICLEI CBC. This agenda item was also featured on the OGMA bulletin. So there you have the links for registration. And just uh, let's remember all these was an effort built on the International Day for Biological Diversity from Agreement to Action. Um, we can move on now to the next slide. Eunice, thank you. Um, these are other uh, events. Ivana, I'm using the slides from the previous um, webinar, actually. I was not able to incorporate any slide from your recently, sorry. Yes, I'm seeing that this is not updated. It's not a problem. Um, we have still um, the same news about the uh, Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. Equally, it's going to participate on the second round table of wetland city mayors. There are a lot of events happening in early June. Um, these rams are is also included on those. Um, ICLE is also co-chairing the Independent Advisory Committee of the Wetland City Accreditation. There's going to be a meeting in June uh, the 7th, and we're also going to start uh, the preparations. Um, and well, there, yes, I think pretty much uh, the most important stuff that we wanted to share was uh, this is not on the slides that UNOS prepared, but I just want to mention that the, uh, on Tuesday, ICLEI CBC as Secretariat of the Advisory Committee on Cities convened the first biannual meeting of the year on course. Uh, this was a meeting where we discussed the opportunities to engage with the CBD. Uh, we presented the updated TOR, uh, different opportunities for our constituency to engage with the CBD and maintain the momentum for mobilization. At this meeting, the Secretariat of the CBD attended. We had the participation of acting as Executive Secretary uh, David Cooper and also uh, Officer Neil Pratt from the Implementation Unit. And more importantly, on this meeting, uh, more than 10 frontrunner cities on biodiversity share their ambitions and plans to contribute to the global biodiversity framework. So these were the updates on a nutshell, and we can, of course, uh, share those slides with more information with you. Thank you, Yunus. I, I suggest take. because you remember we always share the link and 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 uh, uh, revise the update, uh, so we will include that in the the final version. And actually, yes, there sorry. was also uh, we have included the, the report from the Kunming Biodiversity uh, Summit, uh, Kunming Montreal Summit of the Subnational. It was a fantastic report, uh, and it was already included in our LGMA monthly yes. bulletin. Uh, I'm sorry so that uh, I have to come to a conclusion because of my some 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 bad management of the time but um uh we will be we will reaching out to you uh both updates from your habitat assembly but also sps one thing we'd like to request you that those who are coming to any of those events uh born and Nairobi, please inform us so that we coordinate appropriately uh, with that uh, i'd like to thank you all, all those who contributed and cut i think we are not that much over time thank you very much for all your patience and have a nice weekend to all of you.